Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is former Tennessee Governor Winfield Dunn. You know, we were talking about uh, Donald Trump in the first part of the show. Um, much like when you took office, Donald Trump takes office at a very polarized time. You took office in the late 60s, early 70s, a very polarizing time in this country, particularly over the Vietnam War. How do you compare those two periods? Are we more polarized today than we were then, or is it about the same? Well, of course, my experience was limited to Tennessee, but thinking more universally about our country, uh, we had uh, uh, just entered the uh, uh, third year of Richard Nixon's first term, he was doing some very positive things. He was making some strides in foreign relations that were very promising. Uh, then I spill over into the second term and things began to get very cloudy. However, I think those were polarized days to some extent and Watergate uh, inspired even more intense polarization. So what is it that we do today to bring in some political healing? Because it does not appear the country, even after the election, is getting, in fact, we're getting more polarized rather than coming back together. How do we make the healing begin? Pat, that's a good question, and I'm not sure I have an answer, but I know this. Donald Trump was elected by the core of the people of this country. He was a man of the people. And who would have ever designed the manner by which he became the man of the people? But he did. The people spoke. And he was their choice. And was my choice, because I certainly voted for him. Uh, there's a great deal of difference. The polarization today is much more intense at the national level and in the parties between. Does it, does it frighten you? Does it well, scare you? Uh, it concerns me greatly because I see so much built-in opposition from the Democrat Party uh, for the sake simply of opposition to slow our president down and trying even to, to put a, can, a, a, a cabinet together. Let me go back to Tennessee. When you were governor, governors were only allowed to serve one four-year term. So yes. the feeling was the day a governor was elected, he became a lame duck. Did That's you absolute. feel that way when you were governor, that you were all immediately constrained? Pat, when I became governor, I was so consumed with the challenge of bearing that trust. Your first of elected the office. That I was just trying to, uh, uh, to come to grips with the responsibilities that I had suddenly inherited. Uh, and so I'll have to say that was my, the, my most intense concern. In your book, you mentioned that you thought it would be best in Tennessee. Today we allow governors to serve two four-year terms, mm -hmm. eight years in office. Mm -hmm. You thought it would be best perhaps to have governors serve one six-year term. Why did you think six years would be better than just one? I, obviously better than one four-year term, yeah. but why better than two terms? I admire you for picking that up out of my book. I feel very strong about that. Uh, a one six-year term allows a governor to have enough time to achieve some things that he may be responsible for initially, but doesn't have the staying power because of the limit of four years to get everything done. Six years eliminates any worry about re-election. No decisions have to be made on the basis, well, can I be re-elected? in four years. And six years is an adequate time senators serve for six years. And I think the governor of Tennessee would be well, well positioned in a six-year term. We changed bases, changed topics just a little bit to a different thing. You wrote your book a couple of years ago about your political career, how you became governor your four years as a state's chief executive. But you've also since then written a children's book. Uh, give us the background on that, and particularly the, the role of Walter Nestrick, the well-known Nashville businessman who helped illustrate the book. That's very interesting that you'd bring it up. The little book is titled, How the Bluebird Got Its Color. And it's a result of my daughter, Gail, who is now a very mature woman, asking me recently if I could remember the little story I told her at bedtime. Always she asked for the bluebird story. 
And I said, I'll try, sugar. And I did. I wrote it out. Walter Nestrick is a wonderful friend, a wonderful amateur artist. He read the story. He loved it. And he said, I want to illustrate it. The result is the little book, How a Bluebird Got Its Color. Uh, we've sold everyone that we had produced uh, 800 and all, and people have been extremely nice. The, the Bluebird story has a message in it, and it's a little bit of a surprise right near the end. And I think grandparents and parents uh, relish the thought of reading that little book to their children. You want to keep that a secret as to what the, what the message is? Maybe we ought to do that. We'll no, give everything away. I think the message comes with the story. And uh, once read, the message is clear. Let's take a break. Former Governor Winfield Dunn is our guest on Inside Politics. We're back to continue to talk to him as he reflects on his career and what's going on and some parallels between what went on during his time in office and what's going on today. Back with that conversation after this break. <laughs>